Hey guys, recent news came out that Channel Fireball is not making any money from their monopoly of events. Now let me, that is amazing because before the monopoly happened, the events were much cheaper. And the only reason that you had a monopoly was to create better events. But with competition, you had people bidding on hosting an event because it actually is good expected value. They're hoping to make money or break even or to expand their brand. That was pre-monopoly. Now, post-monopoly, we have more people attending events according to Channel Fireball. We have reduced pay for judges. We have similar pay, although they did the whole pay to pros. That's mainly on Hasbro and Wizard of the Coast. But we have reduced pay for artists coming soon. And amazingly, even Tolarian community is surprised and shocked that they haven't yet showed a profit. We haven't closed the books on 2018, but it is highly unlikely that China Fireball events will show a profit in 2018. Part of this is based on increased cost of starting a new business and the investments that are required, but it is a three year contract, so these events should start paying dividends in 2019 and 2020. So this is coming directly from the horse's mouth. I love the way they phrase it. Uh, they phrase this as a startup venture, as if this was the first time they were going to host an event and they didn't understand how much the event would cost, what their margins would need to be. But in fact, they hosted so many events and theoretically have done such a great job that they were given a monopoly of events. So no, this is not a new venture. This is not a new business. You've done it before. In fact, you've done it so quote unquote well before that you were given an entire monopoly. It would be like a gas station. And the gas station, let's say it's ExxonMobil, did such a good job that the government decided to give ExxonMobil a monopoly. And then the reason the gas station said that they didn't make money was because it's a new venture. It's a new business. We've never run a gas station before. This is highly illogical. It is incredible that judges are not employees. I made another video about how everyone is a vendor and everyone does not have health insurance. No one has health insurance under this model because judges are not employees. The pros are not employees. The players are obviously not employees. The vendors are not employees. The artists are not employees. I mean, do we have anyone left? So they're not making money. I mean, it's very difficult for a monopoly that used to be competitive. It's competitive because people want to host GPs to make money. So let me repeat that again. If GPs were not making money, you wouldn't have pastime games and other people fighting so hard, Star City Games, to host a GP. They've done the math and they said, okay, if I do a GP this way, I will make money. So it's very difficult for a competitive industry to go into a monopoly and for that monopoly owner not to make money. Historically, this is not something that happens very often. Uh, prices have increased. I mean, prices have increased. That is not a disclaimer. That is not false. We used to pay $40 for events to get a playmat. Now we pay $80, $90 and extra if we want that playmat. Now we do get a really cool pen show, I guess. A pen and a, a notepad for life. But my gosh, it's, it's just very, very difficult to understand this. Um, in terms of business, in terms of how economical, how could this possibly be that an industry that used to be very competitive with many people putting bids out to host a GP and having more GPs, now we have less, go into a monopoly. The monopoly charges more money, pays, is attempting to pay artists less money and is not making money. 
something is very, very wrong with this business model. And I think it comes down to that person thing that this is a new business venture. So who are they paying then? If they're not paying judges, artists, pros, and then the prize support is much worse, the prize support on the wall is notified. It, it is, there's no argument. It just is worse. There's less. You get less per ticket. You have to pay more. The play mat is no longer included. And pay extra for that. This business is run exceedingly poor. If it in a monopoly state, it cannot make money. And I don't have very high hopes for it because it's actually cutting back. So if a business has a bad year and it's optimistic, it will actually spend more money on marketing. It will spend more money on having larger events, having more events, and having more personnel, having more artists. Does it look like that's what they're doing? No, they're trying to get rid of the artists. They're having less GP events. And these are just numbers. These are just numbers. They have less GP events than before. So if I was Wizard of Coast, I would say, hmm, if my goal is to promote my brand as much as possible, I should have as many GPs in as many locations as I can because that's not out of cost. Maybe I pay a little bit for boxes, but I can make the vendor pay for that. I can make the, the person holding the convention pay for it. I'll just give them discount price. But when you're selling paper products, how much could a box of paper really cost probably less than five dollars to produce so they're going to make money regardless where's the coach will make money regardless and they will make more money when there's more events why wouldn't you allow people to compete and bid so if i wanted to run a gp and i put in a bid and i showed a business plan and i had uh i had a way to do it why should I not be allowed to run a GP? And why should I or a magic fest? I mean, I'm going to do what's going to make me money. So theoretically, I would not want to host a GP if it doesn't make me money. And the whole artist stuff, now the more I read about it, the more upset I get. Um, a lot of times, this is how artists are treated. I'll tell you a story of um, a graphic designer we hired from my old startup. I didn't own the startup, but I was in charge of the hiring. And it happened around, she graduated, we went to an event. I actually didn't see her artwork, but the owner did, and the owner's brother did, and they loved the artwork, and they thought she would be a good fit. So she came in, she interviewed one time, uh, and it went well, apparently, and then she interviewed with me. I thought she was great. Uh, she just graduated at University of Houston. Uh, it's doing something called like graphic design block or something. So she had five years of college to get this certain degree at University of Houston. And she came in and she wanted, I think, 35000 And I said, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. And I checked with my bosses. They were good. Then my bosses left for two months. And I couldn't, I couldn't sign the, I couldn't have her sign a contract. I couldn't do anything because the bosses, I mean, they're gone. They left for Brazil for the World Cup. I'm, you know, I do you think I'm kidding? I am not kidding. They, that is what they left, and I was in charge of the company for two months, but I didn't really know. Like, I couldn't hire someone because that's kind, that's above my pay grade. So she called, and I tried to explain the situation to her. And she said, and the, the first, after the second phone call, she, she called like every day. She said, all right, I'll do 32000 And I was like, no, you don't need to do that. Um, it's not a problem. It's just we got to wait for the bosses to come back. And I had actually no communication with them. They were just gone. They were literally no email, no phone. And I was like, oh, man, this is not the best. Um, so... A month later, we still had not signed her. We still had not done the contract. And I felt bad. And to be honest, I forgot about it because uh, I wasn't handling calls. The secretary was. And then she was like, oh, I'll take 30000 And I said, I said uh, no, you don't need to do that. Um, it's fine. And then they returned. We called her the next day. She came in. We signed the contract. Everything was good. And I gave her thirty-five, And I never... So that conversation between me and her, and that, just, that was it. That C went to 32 and 30,000. 
that conversation, you know, for in terms of what I thought, it just never happened. It never happened because, but that's how artists think. That's how graphic design designers are treated, and they're treated very poorly. Uh, I don't know why, and honestly, I think they're very. I think maybe there's just too many of them. Maybe there's too many artists, but they're very talented. They went to school to study to learn something that has value that can create. You know. They're creating something of value that I can physically hold, not like financial people or Bitcoins. BitConnect. BitConnect. So if Google BitConnect is the greatest scam or the worst scam, depending on how which side you are on in the history, because it's just a Ponzi scheme. Or Puka Points, right? These imaginary things that it's kind of like, oh, okay, I guess my BitConnect coin went up today, or my Bitcoin went up, or it went down. Um, yeah, but they're actually creating something tangible that you can look at and then you can say, oh, this is, this has value to my company or to me and I've enjoyed it. So artists are, they, in today's society, artists are very suspect to doing work for free, doing freelance work where they have to take the whole burden of the materials. The laptop is not expensive. The program is not, uh, it's sorry. The laptop is expensive. The program is expensive. Uh, many times when they're freelancing, if their computer breaks, no one's going to buy you a new computer. You've got to use your own money to do that. Uh, and that's one of the things, biggest pet peeves I have uh, about some companies is when they ask you to use your own laptop, especially for graphic design and videography. Nah, they're just chewing your... It's the same with Lyft and Uber. You use your own car, great, you got $15, $18 an hour, but what type of damage do you do to your car? And when your car's air conditioner breaks, that's 2,500 bucks. Do you account for that? Nope, you didn't. But the government does. The government does. That's uh, the reimbursement or something, some tax refund. We put your miles in for the company car. Even the government knows how to do that. So come on, Uber, Lyft. So back to uh, business models. I got off on a little tangent because I am very uh, supportive of our artist. I do think that artists should be W-2s. They should have health care. Uh, if you don't give someone health care, they're not going to ask for it. They're not, oh, sorry. If you do not give them the option of having health care, they're not going to go out and buy it themselves. Just like a certain YouTuber, Junior McCheeseburger. You can tell him a million times you should get health insurance, but he probably still doesn't have it. And that's, as I look into Wizard of Coast and the fact that no one has health insurance, maybe that's just what our society has become for this game. It's become bad. So if your company is doing poorly, I'm of the belief that if you believe in your company, you believe in the model, you believe in the numbers, and Channel Fireball has said it does openly, then you reinvest. You invest in those artists, you make them happier, you give them two tables instead of one, you pay for the hotel, you pay for their, um, to teach classes on art, you create a magic festival or something, you pay your cosplayers. I know you don't like to do that, but you pay your cosplayers. You pay, you know, pros to go there and to, you know, show up. You give them a little bit more money to show up and you treat your players better. So it's okay to charge a player more money if they are getting a better experience. It is not okay to charge a player more money when you pay everyone else less that the player would want to see. And honestly, you open the conversation. You you have to open dialogue with your player base and say, hey, you know, Magic Fest, what do you want from it? You want, oh, better prizes. Okay, we'll figure out how to do better prizes. You want uh, cosplayers, okay? We'll figure out how to do cosplayers. The whole model of, uh, in anime conventions, the cosplayer can charge for their autograph and or photo of them. But in Magic, this is, as we've seen from Tolarian Community College, this is poo-pooed upon, right? Imagine paying $5 for a photo with Rudy from Alpha Investments. No, that's bad. But in, uh, what's her name? Veronica Ann? She charges $50, see our voices Pikachu, for a simple autograph. No hand, no photos, that's extra. 50 bucks for an autograph. What, like most artists, you, you're really misunderstanding um, the art. I, the last time I went to GP, 
they had you could you could get them to sign any amount of cards, but then they had like a please tip, and or you can buy something from them, and they actually appreciate when you buy something from them, and then you, they sign the cards, uh, and then you should also tip them. I mean, you should do both, right? You just buy and then tip them too, but yeah, artists are there not because they're they're there because they want to be there, not because they're being paid a million dollars to be there, unlike some e celebrities. Uh, who are flying to London as we speak. Anyway, bye.